Okay, we haven't talked about op amps for a couple of lectures. Um, so let's try to uh, get back in the mode about, of thinking about op amps. We are going to do that uh, by looking at this example problem, which happens to um, be framed as a little bit more of a, a general amplifier uh, kind of problem. Okay, so for uh, this example, remember uh, we've, cut, we've covered uh, inverting and non-inverting op amps so far. So for this example, uh, given this voltage source shown here, uh, we want to amplify that voltage source and deliver a voltage to this one kilo ohm resistance. And we want this voltage source uh, has a magnitude of uh, 5 millivolts, but we want the voltage across our load to have a magnitude of at least 5 volts. It can be it can be opposite in sign, but the magnitude has to be at least 5 volts. Okay, so given this task and the fact that we have uh, some op amps set up to be an inverting op amp and a non inverting op amp, uh, we are going to try to uh, make an amplifier that can uh, get the needed gain from our specification on the top. Okay, so, uh, we also have a few more specifications down here. So we have a restriction on the input resistance. We want the input resistance to be at least uh, one meg ohm. And we want the output resistance to be low, so as close to zero ohms as possible. And so how we're gonna make uh, an amplifier that meets this specification using an inverting op amp and a non-inverting op amp. Uh, and we only can choose resistors, the external resistors for the op amp between a kilo ohm and 100 kilo ohms. Okay, so before we uh, start constructing the op amp circuits, let's first look at uh, this first specification and figure out what's the gain uh, that we actually need here. So I gave you a, a source voltage and I told you what voltage we want across our load, but I didn't tell you a gain. So what's our gain? What gain do we need? Or you don't have to give me a number, just tell me how you would figure it out. What's the definition of gain? So gain is going to be my voltage at the output divided by my voltage at the input. And I only care about the magnitude of the output voltage, so let's just worry about the magnitude of the gain. <coughs> so we'll take just magnitude of everything. Okay, and if we say that, then our output voltage magnitude has to be greater than or equal to 5 volts. And our input uh, voltage is 5 millivolts. So this means the magnitude of my gain has to be greater than or equal to 100. A gain of 100 will be the smallest gain uh, that satisfies this, but we can have a gain larger than that. And that's a magnitude. So I could have a gain of, say, negative 100 or a gain of positive 100. It doesn't matter. Uh, yes, sorry. 5 millivolts, yeah, 1,000. Okay, so 
How are we going to do that? Okay, so can we achieve our, our gain magnitude of at least a thousand um, just using the uh, parameters that we've been given? So we have an inverting op amp and we have a non inverting op amp, and we had another restriction because we didn't have a, an infinite supply of resistors. So we have uh, resistors values between 1 kilo ohm and 100 kilo ohms. Okay, so given that restriction, uh, what's going to, and I, I'm not going to put resistors in series and in parallel. I'm just going to use one resistor for the feedback resistor and one resistor for R1 in either the inverting or non-inverting op amp. Okay, so if I'm operating under this restriction, what would be the maximum gain that I can get from the inverting op amp? So that's negative. The gain is negative R2 over R1. So if I'm trying to maximize gain, I'm going to pick the largest value possible for R2. And I'll pick the smallest value possible for R1. And so my maximum gain is going to be negative 100. Okay, if we look at the non-inverting op amp, this gain is 1 plus R2 over R1. So again, if I want to maximize gain, choose the largest value for R2. Choose the smallest value for R1. And that's a gain of 101. So one of these op amps by itself cannot reach uh, the gain that I want. So what? how would you accomplish what we're trying to do here? Is it cascade op amps? Okay, so an op amp, we can model it using our voltage amplifier model. And we've done cascaded amplifier models. So it's the same thing with op amps. That's telling us we need to do a cascade of our op amps. Okay, so the solution. We're going to make a cascade amplifier using op amps. Okay, if we have we have two stages here because we know we have an inverting op amp and we know we have a non-inverting op amp. So which op amp should be the input stage? And remember, let's recall our other uh, design parameters. And that is the input resistance is at least a mega ohm. And I want my output resistance to be as close to, to zero ohms as possible. OK, so the input stage is going to be the non-inverting op amp. And why do we want to use a non-inverting op amp? Okay, so the non-inverting op amp uh, configuration looks like this. And my input voltage goes there. So it's going, the, the input resistance to this is here. I'm looking in through that terminal. So it's the same as the input resistance into a terminal, an, an input terminal of my op amp, which is infinite. So for the non inverting op amp, my input resistance 
is very high. So that meets my input resistance uh, design specification. What was the input resistance of an inverting op amp? So here's my here's my inverting op amp. And so in order to figure out the input resistance, I'm looking in from the point at which I apply the input voltage. What was this input resistance? Anybody remember? It should be in your notes. Mm. From just looking at the circuit, it kind of looks like R1 plus R2. But remember, this point is, is a virtual ground. And my input resistance is equal to uh, my input voltage divided by my input current and if I because this point uh, this node here is at a virtual ground this is going to be equal to uh, R1 okay so um, if I had the inverting op amp at the input my input resistance is going to be equal to R1. But I don't have any resistors that I can use that are omega ohm. So I cannot meet I cannot meet this first requirement if I put my inverting op amp as my input stage. Therefore, my uh, output stage should be my inverting op amp. Now, if I didn't have one of each, if I just had two non-inverting op amps, um, the output stage could also be my non-inverting op amp. It, it, the output stage is not uh, critical to be either the inverting or non-inverting configuration because the requirement we have for our output stage is that the output resistance uh, is, is zero. And for both the non-inverting and inverting op amp, these have an output resistance of zero ohms. So both of them would, would satisfy the requirements we have for the output stage. Uh, it just so happens that we have one of each. So if you have one of each, because of the input resistance requirement, that means that the uh, non-inverting amplifier has to be the input stage. Okay, uh, any questions so far? Okay, so we know our cascading op amps and we know what order we're doing it. So this next slide has what the schematic would look like. So here is my source in the schematic. Here's my load. And here's my first stage of the cascaded amplifier made out of the non-inverting amplifier. And the second stage is going to be uh, the inverting op amp. In the previous slide, I also called uh, this first stage as the input stage. So if you have a cascaded amplifier, whatever amplifier is, ca is connected to the input is the input stage. And then whatever amplifier is connected directly to the load becomes the output stage. I could have another stage in the middle. Uh, I would just call that stage two, I guess. There's no uh, special word for that one. 
Okay, so let's find uh, the game of the first stage. And so what is that going to be? Uh, this point is V1. So let's write an equation for V1. What equation do I need to use? It's not, you don't have to do any circuit analysis at this point. You should have the equation in your notes. Yeah, it's the equation for the output voltage of the um, uh, non-inverting op amp. So 1 plus R2 over R1. And it needs to be multiplied by the voltage into the op amp. Now, uh, one thing that might be confusing is we've never had a resistor here before when we looked at our, our non-inverting op-amp configuration. There's always some voltage source directly connected to the non-inverting input. Yeah, there's no current there. So let's just say that this point, you can call that the input voltage. Okay, so this is exactly the non-inverting uh, op-amp output voltage equation. Okay, now how does VI relate to VS? Um, someone has already said that. There's no current in this branch because the only path for the current to take would be into a terminal of the op-amp, and we already said that that has an infinite <coughs> input resistance. Okay, so that means that this current must be zero. That means there's no voltage dropped across resistor RS. So if there's no voltage across RS, that means that Vs and Vi have to be equal. Okay, so I can define a gain at this point in the circuit, a gain at the output of the first stage as V1 over Vs. I'm just substituting Vs is equal to Vi. And that's the same as my uh, non-inverting op-amp equation. Okay, let's make this gain as high as possible. Because we're trying to get an overall gain of 1,000. So we, we need to make our gains pretty high. So that means I'm going to pick the highest value possible for R2. And I'm going to pick the smallest value possible for R1. Because R1 doesn't do anything to the input resistance, so I don't care if R1 is small. Okay, so that means that the voltage gain of my first stage is going to be 101. Okay, now let's find, let's write an equation for the overall gain so that we can satisfy um, our design requirements and figure out exactly how I need to build the, the second stage. Okay, so what's my uh, equation going to be? Let's call this point. V naught, because that's the output voltage. What's my equation going to be for this output voltage? Negative R4 over R3 multiplied by what voltage? By V1. 
Because if I just pretended that this whole first stage didn't exist and I had some voltage source V1, then that would be my uh, standard um, inverting amplifier circuit. So this is my standard equation for the output voltage of my inverting amplifier. Okay, but I know that V1 is 101 times Vs based upon us selecting 100 kilo ohm resistor for R2 and a 1 kilo ohm resistor for R1. Okay, so if I express this as a gain, this is going to be my overall gain, V0, the voltage at the output divided by the voltage at the input, Vs. And so that's going to be negative 101 times R4 over R3. And now if I look at just the magnitude of this, I want that to be greater than or equal to 1,000. So that means that R4 over R3 is greater than or equal to 1000 over 101. This is 9.9. .9. So I, I just need to choose resistors with this ratio. So if I choose, let me just set one of the resistors. So I'll just say, OK, R3. Is going to be a kilo ohm, then that means our 4R has to be at least 9.9 .9 kilo ohms. It can be greater than that. That's just going to end up with a, a great uh, a gain that's greater than a thousand. Any questions on this problem? Okay, so we've looked at a, a cascade of op amps, so more than one op amp in a circuit. The next thing we're going to talk about is a difference amplifier, and we are going to what a difference amplifier does. It's, it's just going to take uh, the difference between two signals. So one signal subtracted from another signal and it's going to amplify that signal. And the way we can realize a difference amplifier is by using uh, multiple op amps. Or we can do it with a single op amp too, but we'll also look at how to do it with multiple op amps. So it's, it's going to be similar kind of analysis as this circuit. Okay. So let's talk about um, our difference amplifiers. Uh, like I just said, it's just you're going to take the difference between two signals and then amplify it. Why would you uh, want to do this? What kind of scenario would you have where you just want to take the difference between two signals and amplify that? Yeah, if you're trying to remove a certain frequency, then one of your signals can be that signal with a lot of frequency components, and then the other signal can be just the frequency you want to remove, and a different amplifier will do that. So, in a way, it's sort of acting like a filter. 
um, but it's better than a filter because you have uh, more power coming out of it at the end. Okay, so let's look at uh, some ways to make a difference amplifier. But first, let's let's uh, define some terms. Okay, so uh, we're going to be looking at the output voltage of an amplifier, and that output voltage is going to be uh, expressed using two terms. So one of them is this A D. This is the differential gain, A sub D, is going to be the differential gain factor. And that's going to be multiplied by the difference between the two signals. So um, I think I have it written down here. Yeah. So there's VI sub D is going to be the difference between signal 2 of the input minus signal 1. Uh, we also want to define a common mode gain, that's this A sub CM, and that's going to be multiplied by the common mode signal. And what the common mode signal is, it's defined here, it's just going to be the average of our two signals. And for a difference amplifier, we don't want to amplify anything that's in common with the two signals. So ideally, this common mode gain, this A sub CM, would be zero in an ideal difference amplifier. We're going to find um, in a real difference amplifier that's not zero, but we want to make that as small as possible compared to the differential gain. Because the whole point is that we're amplifying the differences, not the signals that are in common. You can also express the uh, input voltages VI1 and VI2. Uh, let's do some, some algebra here and you can express them in terms of the common mode voltage and the difference voltage. Okay, so you can look at, at that more later. Let's look at some example signals. Okay, so let's say uh, VI1 is 2 volts and VI2 is 5 volts. So what would be my differential voltage here. So VI2 minus VI1, so that's going to be 3 volts. And what is my common mode voltage? It's 1 half VI1 plus VI2. So this is going to be 3.5 volts. Okay, so if I have these two signals, then this voltage would be multiplied by my differential gain and this voltage would be multiplied by my common mode gain. Most of the time you don't have only DC signals though, so let's look at some AC ones too. Okay, so I have VI1 is a sine wave at some frequency, VI2 is sine wave at the same frequency but with an amplitude of 10 so what is my differential voltage? 9 what? 9 sine omega t and the common mode voltage average of these two 5.5 sine oops omega t Okay, and then let's look at these two signals. So signal 1 is uh, a sine wave at some frequency plus a DC voltage or a DC term uh, of 10. And signal 2 is a sine wave opposite in phase to the first one. And you also have a DC uh, term as well. Okay, so for this one, what is the differential voltage going to be? VI2 minus VI1. 
2 sine oops 2 sine omega t the DC voltages uh, canceled out and what is the common mode signal and that's 10 because if I add these two up the signs the signs cancel out I get 20 divided by 2 so I end up with 10 and that makes sense because the difference between uh, V1 and V2 should be some uh, sinusoid because there's a difference in these uh, phases but it shouldn't include any DC because both of them have the same amount of DC and that means in the common mode signal it should be just the DC yes this is out of phase because of the, the negative sign. Okay, so this is a, a, an example of another uh, function that you can achieve using a different amplifier. So if you had, say, a, a common DC voltage in your signal, you can get rid of the DC if you want. And you might have DC in your amplified signals because of the fact that you need to bias your amplifiers. We haven't talked about amplifier uh, biasing yet because uh, it doesn't really apply to an op amp. But uh, when we talk about transistor amplifiers, you have to add some bias. So you have some DC that you're adding to your amplified signal. And you might need to get rid of it. This is a possible way to do it. OK. Um, Let's see. Uh, oh, the other important point on this slide is that uh, let's go back to the first example. So, like I said, we're multiplying all these common mode signals by this common mode gain factor, a sub c n, and we want that to be as as close to zero as possible. But it's in actuality, it's not zero. So, in order to quantify uh, how good your difference amplifier is. One of the parameters is something called the common mode rejection ratio, or CMRR for short. CMRR for short. So the common mode rejection ratio is you take the magnitude of the differential gain, divide by the magnitude of the common mode gain, and take the log of that multiplied by 20. So since this ideally goes to zero, you want this ratio to be as large as possible. And that would be a better difference amplifier. We'll come back to this um, in an example problem and look at an amplifier and quantify a common mode rejection ratio. Okay, let's, but first let's talk about how to make a difference amplifier. Okay, so we know what we wanted to do, but how do we actually make one? Uh, let's look at the two amplifier configurations that we know so far, which is our inverting op amp and our non inverting op amp. Okay, I've written the output um, voltage equations here. And, but I'm, I'm giving each one of them a, a different uh, input signal. So the inverting one is VI sub 1. The non-inverting one has VI sub 2. Okay, so if I write the two output voltage equations, and then I look at just taking these output voltages, and I just add them up. Okay, so that's what this looks like. And this is almost what we want. Because what we want to have is we want an output voltage that is equal to some gain factor, A, this is our, our differential gain, multiplied by the difference, VI2 minus VI1. So I have VI2 here minus VI1. I just can't take out these gain terms 
uh, like I can in, in the lowest equation because they're not quite the same uh, but it's almost the same so this is giving me a clue onto how to make uh, a difference amplifier circuit Uh, if I make the gains really, really high, yes, but I still have to do that adding together of the two signals. Uh, I can't just do this, right? Because they have different output voltages. Okay, so let me show you um, the circuit that accomplishes this. And it sort of looks like a combination of an inverting and a non-inverting op-amp. So this is the difference amplifier circuit. Uh, sorry, this is hard to see. This is VI1. This is VI2. Okay, so this circuit um, accomplishes um, that output voltage that we want. Some gain multiplied by VI2 minus VI1. Okay, let's figure out exactly what the gain is, though. So we need to find the output voltage. And how are we going to do that? Um, I'm asking for a, uh, a circuit analysis method. Uh, that's true. I, I will need to do that. Um, but I can make it a little bit easier on myself if I, if I do something else first. So two voltage, two independent sources. So I'm gonna. T uh, I want to turn one off. And so, what, what what was that called? So superposition. So I'm going to use that circuit analysis method uh, first. Okay. So if I only have uh, VI1 on, I'm going to call this output V0 sub 1. Okay, so I turned off VI2. That means I um, shorted VI2. And that means the end of R3 that VI2 was connected to is now just going to ground. Okay, so now what's my output voltage? It might look like a circuit you've never solved before, but think about uh, R3 and R4. Is there any voltage across R3 and R4? No. Why not? Because there's no current. Because the only path for the current would be in or out of this uh, terminal of the op amp, which has an infinite resistance. Okay, So there's no current. So that means the voltage across R3 and R4 is zero. Okay, So that means that R3 and R4 don't really matter. It's sort of like this non-inverting input was connected to ground. And if that was the case, then now can you tell me what this output voltage is? 
this is the uh, inverting op amp. So I just write that equation. Okay, so going back to our original circuit, negative R2 over R1 times VI1. That's going to be the output of this op amp configuration at the top when I only have uh, VI1 on. Okay, everyone okay with this so far? Okay, so let's look at uh, VI2 only. So I'm shorting out VI1. So the left side of R1 should just go to ground. I'm going to call this output voltage V0 sub 2. Here's R4. And R3 has VI2 connected to it. Okay, this one looks um, harder to analyze too. Um, but what if I just take the voltage right at that point? Uh, let's call that, I don't know, VX. So I could redraw this as this circuit. Uh, this is R2. And that's just Vx, once I know what Vx is. OK, so what would my output of this amplifier be. This is a, a, a standard non-inverting op-amp configuration. So that's 1 plus R2 over R1 times Vx. Okay, so I just need to know what is this voltage Vx in terms of I2. So how do I get a relationship between Vx and I2? So I just use a voltage divider here. I can use a voltage... Be careful with using a, a voltage divider. So if I have a, a voltage here, uh, let's call this Vr1, R2. I could not, if I wanted to find this voltage, let's call this uh, Vy. Oops. So Vy is not equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times V in this circuit because I have R3 in parallel with R2. So if you add stuff onto your voltage divider, the voltage divider equation is not applicable. But in this case, I have a, my voltage divider right here. I did add stuff onto it because it's connected to my op amp. But it doesn't matter because the resistance looking this way is infinite. So it's physically connected to my op amp, but it's like it's not uh, affecting my voltage divider circuit. So in this case, it's fine to use a voltage divider to find Vx. So it's going to be R4 over R3 plus R4 times Vi2. And I can plug this into Vx, and that will be my output. And oops, oh, I wrote over it. Let me just erase a little bit. Yeah, 
same meaning. Okay, so this is my equation for the output voltage if I substitute in for Vx in this equation. And, uh, oops. This is just because of my uh, non inverting op amp equation. And that's our voltage divider. Okay, so in order to make our difference amplifier, we are getting an output that is VO1 plus VO2. Uh, one thing that we want to do is we want to uh, follow uh, this ratio here. So, so VO2 uh, divided by VI2, we want that to be equal to uh, R2 over R1 so that uh, the weighting of this second input has the same weighting as the first one so that we can take out a common uh, gain term and realize a difference amplifier. Okay, so let's look at uh, that actual ratio of V0 sub 2 to VI sub 2. This is our equation and we want to set that equal to R2 over R1. So what that means is that, that R4 over R4 plus R3 has to be equal to R2 over R2 plus R1. Of course, to simplify it further, R4 over R3 just has to have the same ratio as R2 over R1. Okay, so once we do all of that, uh, Here's our, our, our substitution, or here's um, uh, just taking out uh, R3 in the first term. And then we make our substitution uh, of these equal ratios that we looked at from the previous slide. And you end up with, I got back in, you end up with uh, V0 sub 2 is equal to R2 over R1 times VI sub 2. Okay, this is for um, only looking at input voltage 2. So because we're doing superposition, we want to look at the overall output. So let's take V0 sub 1 plus V0 sub 2. And this is R2 over R1 times VI sub 2 minus R2 over R1 times VI sub 1. Or in other words, R2 over R1 times the difference of VI sub 2 minus VI sub 1. And R2 over R1 is now going to be A sub D, or the differential gain. Okay, so this circuit here, that's our difference amplifier. Okay, so that's it for today.